Hey everybody, talk and today we're talking about the hag. Now, hags, hags cover a lot of stuff. Generally speaking, um, a hag is a creepy-ish looking woman, generally old, who lives in a swamp. It's the most basic version of it. Um, you want a really nice named one, Baba Yaga. I'm not going to talk about Baba Yaga specifically because she's way more than a hag. She's, like, the embodiment of all that is horrifying about Russian winter and then some. She's a very interesting character in and of herself. But hags really only have that in common. They are women, they have magical powers, and they live in out-of-the-way areas. It's not always a swamp. It's just what we think of when we think of a hag. They live in a swamp because swamps are creepy. I like swamps, but I'm weird. So, in D&D and various other lore, you get lots of types of hags. You have the green hag, you have the anise hag, who's a giant half-ogre thing. You have sea hags. You have the death hag, who's horrifying. And there's probably more hags than just that, but the thing is, is all of them are women with magical powers. Duh, they're like a witch. They're like a super witch, honestly. They're, they're, they're like a step above witch. Because the magic has changed them. Now, of course, this changes from setting to setting. Most sometimes hags are just born. That's just the way they are. It's not some sort of manifestation of anything. It's not a transformation. In other times, there very much is a transformation. Um, there may actually be an, in fact, actual potion that, or something they will consume or a ritual they will partake in to turn them into what this is. Now, here's the simple question. Why? Okay, if it is the transformation kind, why? Why would you do this? I mean, hags are ugly. Like, there's a reason why the term calling someone a hag is an insult. Well, power. Okay, this isn't like the Mononongle, where I'm honestly questioning the hell out of why anyone would. Like, I don't see the positives here. In the case of a hag, I real I do see the positives. All right. First positive. You are significantly stronger and more durable than you were before. Hags are, without exception, stronger and more durable than a standard human. Or any of the normal races generally put forth. They are upgraded quite considerably. Um, in the case of an Anis hag, they are... Basically half giants. They're 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 really big and they will literally just rip your arms apart. They have massive claws, they are terrifying. And in the case of green hags, um, and I'm gonna use the DD terminology here just because it's easier that way. Green hags are the deceptive ones. They can disguise themselves. They're the ones who do the the creepy calls that sound like someone in need in distress or an animal or something and they'll bait you in what they get is less on the physical side of things and more of the i have bunches of magic is it tons no is it more than literally everyone else has yes considerably and if they are the transformation kind they've already got magic to work with they're doing some form of magic already before they start doing whatever it is that you know whatever hag powers they get Sea hags are sea hags. They are terrifying, and they can just kill you with a look in some mythology. In other ones, it's more of just you're paralyzed with fear, and they'll walk over and just snap your neck. Death hags are death hags. That's a D&D &D thing. They're extra planar monstrosities, and holy freaking crap, they will come into your nightmares and murder you. That's why you turn into one of those. Now, going into more broad strokes, because getting outside of the standard deviations, because there's also, like, ace hags. I think they're called ice hags or frost hags. They're the creepy northern witches. That's what they do. Um, hags come from well, little old ladies who live in the woods and are kind of creepy and off-putting. That's probably where it originates. Just the, the creepy lady who lives in the woods and does possibly suspect things. Now, that's the boring actual real world one. In fantasy universes, that is very much a hag. And the fun thing with hags from a storytelling standpoint, not so much in-universe, is that they cut deals. Yeah, you can negotiate. You can talk. They'll cut deals with you. Baba Yaga does that. That's kind of why she makes a great example of a hack. She's going to mostly keep to them, but boy howdy is she going to try to backstab you on that one. She is going to set up the deal 
so that she wins and gets everything and you get nothing. Pretty much all hags do that. Now, some are a little less concerned about it. It's more of, oh, hey, you want this cure for a disease. Okay, that costs me nothing. I don't care. You know, it's like five, it's like an hour or two of their time. They don't care. They're going to obviously upcharge the bejesus out of you. So they're going to say, go to the wailing caverns and inside the spring of eternal despair, you will find this glowing mushroom. Go get it. And it's horrible. It is awful for you because you're going through all this terrible stuff in the cave. To them, it would be Tuesday. They just got to walk there and go pick the thing and get it back. They just really don't want to go do it. So they're going to make you go do it. Because, you know, it's like a two-day walk and screw that crap. So I'll make you the potion, set the thing down, and they're like, yeah, you'll get it. It'll just it'll really suck for him. I don't care, though. That's the nice end of things. The bad end of things is they'll make the deal with you, and then it's a monkey's paw. Like, oh, that cure? Yeah, it killed her. She's not suffering anymore. Ah. Yeah, it's, it's that kind. And that's the another interesting thing about hags. They're very fae-like. Now, in some mythologies, they are fae. They are just fairies. They are a type of fairy. They're maybe what happens to a changeling. Maybe that's what happens to a human girl who's been abducted in the swap with a changeling. It's... You know, it, it's open. It's, it's pretty wide open. But hags are really terrifying when you piss them off. Or they just really don't like you because you walk through their swamp or something. There, there's a million things that could set off hags. And quite frankly, you don't want a hag coven on you. Okay? That is universal in all mythologies that feature hags, is they generally show up in groups of three. Well, it's one or three. Very rarely is it two. So you get the coven. There's three of them. They are really powerful when they're all working together. They can see the future. They have clairvoyance. They can speak at range. Now, that doesn't sound super impressive, but quite frankly, anybody who's played D&D or any other game knows how powerful it is being able to see 20 miles away. Okay? That's stupidly helpful for them for long-term planning. They also generally have minions, they may have mind control, they may have more powers than this. Like, they may, honestly, you get into a fight and one of them might just chuck a fireball at you. That's entirely doable for them. It's entirely plausible that this could happen to you. And that's part of the problem. You're fighting three mages. They're weird mages. They're not, like, you know, a normal collegiate mage, if your universe happens to have one of those, or... You know, they're not your normal hedge wizard, though they're closer to that than anything else. They're something different. And I kind of like how Ravenloft described it. Because it really does seem to capture the essence of a hag. They're a corruption of a druidic tradition. That's not literally what they are, but that's sort of how they're described. They're a corruption of the natural order. And not even necessarily corruption. They're just sort of the embodiment of all that is horrifying. It's just that it's Ravenloft, so it is a corruption. It's the evil, horrible parts of nature. You know, it's the, the wasps that stick, you know, their babies inside of other bugs, and then the bugs are all xenomorphed when they die. You know, it's that kind of crap, okay? It's that part of nature. The, the creepy, scary kind that we don't like talking about. You know, not the rainbows and bunnies. It's the, the horrific monsters that eat things and are normal. That's what the hag represents. The scary, the thorn bushes, the, the horrific parts of the dark woods that we don't want to go into. And they've got control over that. Again, depending on your setting and everything else, but that's what they embody. They embody the danger of a natural area. So, you know, if they live in the mountains, they or embody that. They'll, like, summon rocks and thunderstorms and high winds and things of that nature. They live in a swamp. Well, the swamp's gonna try to kill you. Quicksand and, you know, mud pits and vipers and all sorts of horrifying things. But if you get to them, well, they'll at least listen to you, generally. Unless the witches are totally on the, you know, the, the hags are totally on the warpath trying to wipe out a city or something. Then, then you have to go kill them and you have, you have fun with that. I'm gonna not do that. Because I don't want to go marching into their own territory and go fight them on their own turf, because that sounds like a horrible idea. But, hey, it's what you gotta go do, and that's why it sucks, because you're fighting three mages! Who have entire control over the area they're in. Nine times out of ten. It's... It's not a fun thing to deal with. So yes, hags are... 
a corruption of, I guess you could say, femininity. They're, they're all the worst aspects of that. Sort of like how, I don't know, a minotaur, I suppose you could say, is all the worst parts of a man. Or all the worst parts of a bull, but honestly, bulls don't eat people. Neither do, well, men usually don't, but you know what I mean. It's, we can find these sorts of things that represent the, the worst aspects of a particular part of humanity. In the case of the hag, it's a combination of the worst parts of nature, the worst parts of human greed and lust for power, and the worst parts of just general humanity, all wrapped up in one really ugly bag. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and please do not go making any deals with hags. Peace out.